she goes over to his house after the party. Hey, Gala fam, it's Rachel. And Rhea. And we're the Gala sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. Time for an update on the Danny Masterson trial. But before we get started, please make sure you are following us on the social media scrolling below. As well as linked in the description box down below where you will also find the Gala Sisters Little Brothers channel. Please subscribe to this channel as well. And we also have a website where we have three different vlogs and bios and a store, etc. Check it out at www.thegalasisters.com. And of course, if you'd like to stay involved and informed for free, then click that big old subscribe button. And with that, We'll take a look at the update on the Danny Masterson case. So this last week was interesting. The highlight of it, I would say, is that Jane Doe, number four, testified. Now, her real name is Trisha Vesey. She's an actress, but she's not super famous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's different levels of fame and celebrities. Like YouTubers and Beaks that are like D-listers, A-listers, B-listers. C-listers, you know, on all the way up, probably. Exactly. We also saw Jane Doe number two's friend testify, and we heard various transcripts of these women, in particular Jane Doe number three, um, complaining to the LAPD. They played those. We're not really going to go over those. If you want to know exactly what was said, Tony Ortega, who... We'll address that later. Has the full transcripts from the trial and his underground bunker, and you can go read them there. But we are here to analyze this and remember that we are not Me Too sympathizers. We're um, on the side of right and wrong, and we look at things as much as we can legally. And we don't support the Church of Scientology. We don't support Danny Masterson. However, we do support his right to due process and that he is innocent until proven guilty in a court of law because that is his legal right as an American. It doesn't matter if you're Christian, Jewish, a member of the Scientology Church. You worship the dirt outside. Black, white, green, red, gay, straight, short, fat, in whatever you are entitled to that it is a constitutional right for those of you who are brand new to our channel and know nothing about the Danny Masterson case I recommend you starting with this video basically Danny Masterson is being count, uh, charged with three counts of slave it rhymes with slave as we go on we may actually be able to say that but we got to keep it YouTube friendly and he could get up to 45 years up to life for these um, complaints. Yeah. Well, yeah. Allegations. Allegations. Now we have to be very, 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 very careful not to say that they actually happened because we were not there. And unless we were there, we really can't say they happened. Like we can't say like, oh, when the person invented sandwiches, they were wearing a purple shirt. Just think about it that way. That's funny. I like that. Okay. So Trisha and Danny Masterson were in a movie together. They didn't, they didn't say what movie, and... It probably doesn't matter. I don't really care to look it up because I just don't care. You guys can go look it up if you want. So, while they were in this movie together, they shared a trailer together with a whole bunch of other actors, so they were not alone in this trailer. She testified that she spoke to him daily, that... They communicated regularly, and then she goes on to explain that they partied together a lot and that she was not sober at all during this time. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never completely forgotten something, even though the fact that she and I both have PTSD. But when you're intoxicated, it does affect your memory. I mean, I, I don't remember what I ate yesterday. I mean, seriously. <laughs> now, so... We're going to read a little bit of what she said because the, we'll talk about what we think after, but let, let, let's just read it. You were telling us about the stare. Can you describe that stare? It was just a harshness and cold. Maybe it left me feeling intimidated. Was it directed to you or others? I don't know if it was directed to others, but I noticed it. How did you feel about that? 
I remember being confused because it seemed like we all get along at the same time. And it was often Justin Pierce, another actor. And Danny and I seemed to, the three of us, used to hang out a lot. When you saw it, say you would hang out a lot, would that be on the set or off as well? On this set, between shooting, we would. The three of us seemed to. The other cast members didn't seem to be around. And then I think everyone got together and hung out a couple of times. You think. Think. You don't know. You think. There's that word again. Think. I think this happened, but maybe it didn't. Well, maybe it did, but maybe it didn't. You see? It means the same thing. I can't remember. I don't want to answer the question. Go ahead. Oh, okay, a stare. What's a stare? So like when, like, I don't know, um, Andrew Cuomo gave his briefings, um, he was staring at all of us, like those of us who, you know, were using the bathroom during his briefings. Yes, I used the bathroom during his briefings. Was <gasps> like watching me pee or something? Probably didn't even notice. I mean, it's not illegal to stare. When I like look at, when you're like, you're driving in your car and you just look out the window, are you staring at people? I mean, something that comes up throughout this line of questioning and her testimony is that she felt uncomfortable. She felt scared. She was shaky around him. He stared at her. At one point she says, he stood in the doorway and I had to duck under his arms. Okay. I'm five foot one. I'm really short. I'm five foot four. Not much taller, but three inches. I spent a lot of my life around men. I have a dad. Um, yeah. I worked in a restaurant full of men. Restaurant industry is male dominated. I mean, I've ducked under many men's arms. So have I. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it, it's just kind of like a game, I guess, from my experience. <laughs> but stares, the stare. <laughs> what? Is that what you're freaking out about? That's the gal, that's the Galorno stare right there. Okay, so she goes on to talk about how, you know, elaborate this, we went out together, and then she talks about how the movie was a rap, and then she went to this rap party, a W-R-A-P, like a wrap-up party. Yeah, like a yay, we're done. Yep, yeah. and she had a few drinks at this party, she explains, and he was still looking at her. And... I, I'm not naive. I know that before people like hook up or start dating, there is a lot of unspoken communication sometimes between people. Or, and I also know that sometimes people just like imagine that it's there too. Like, you just sometimes you don't know. That's why we use our words. So, <laughs> the words <laughs> can't just count on unspoken communication because not everybody understands what unspoken communication is. Mm hmm. Yes. But, you know, you know what I mean. So, despite the fact that he was making her uncomfortable throughout the whole night, she testifies, she goes over to his house after the party, continues to drink and smoke, you know, speed, speed and then spends the night in his house. Well, he really didn't make her that uncomfortable. She was like, well, I'm going to stay here because, you know, you should never go to a guy's house that you don't want to, you know. I mean, it happened to Aziz Ansari. It happened to Chris Noth. It happened to so many other people. And it's like these guys come down and you're like, well, I went to their house willingly and then something happened. Well, yeah, that was your own fault, dumb dumb. Well, I mean, they don't have the right to still impose Yeah, on but you. you go to someone's house that's making you uncomfortable. You, let me say that again. You go to someone's house despite the fact that you were uncomfortable. That just doesn't make any sense. Just like I would never go to my ex-husband's house. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would never go to my ex-boss's house. No! <laughs> okay. So she did go with this Justin guy. That's why she felt safe. Now, this actually gets really interesting. Her testimony here is fascinating. Pay attention to this. What she has to say, I think, explains everything. So, she ends up choosing a room to sleep in with Justin. Okay. The other guy that she was with. Okay. And she just said that they're best friends, that there was nothing between them. She didn't say that there was or there wasn't. So, at one point, Danny comes into the room. 
And this is what she says. When you went to lay down on the floor, how are you feeling? I mean, I felt drunk. I was tired. I was ready to go to sleep. And I just laid down and went to sleep. What's the next thing you remember? I woke up to Danny trying to pull me up and out of the room. And he was saying something to Justin about taking advantage of me. He was being like, appearing to be brotherly, like he was watching out for me. So it was like, come with me, Justin is doing something, whatever. And I was like, no, he's not. When he tried to pick you up, how is he doing that? I woke up to him over me, just like trying to lift me up. Uh, he was trying to scoop me up off the ground. Did he do that? No, I didn't get up. I kicked him away with my foot. I was pushing him off me and saying that nothing was happening in the room, that Justin was just doing and wasn't doing anything to me, and I just wanted to sleep. Did you see Justin? I was on the floor, and he was on the side of me. I felt like the door was here, and I was here, and he was here. Was Justin still in the bed? Yes! So what were you thinking to yourself at that time when Masterson was trying to pick you up off the floor? At first, I was just like, I wanted to go sleep, and I didn't understand what was going on, and nothing had been going on between Justin and I. I didn't understand. I was confused. I didn't really understand what he was talking about. This actually reminds me of another situation. Maybe the Twiggy situation with Jessica Adams. It Very does. similar story. That's what that reminded me of. Yeah. See? So she goes on to describe that she was going down the hallway with Masterson. She blacked out and then she woke up and she was being raped. Does she ever specifically say who it is? Uh, she says, yeah, she says it was Danny. Does she 100% know that it wasn't just? Well, they asked if there's anything specific about his face that she remembered at the time. And she says, no. And but up until this point in time, she remembers the looks on his face. Okay, so could it have possibly been Justin? I'm not arguing with her that she got raped that night. She, it, I'll say it again. Could it have been Justin? And her own testimony, she keeps saying that she blacked out and she was intoxicated. And especially if you are not used to using Schmied... You might, just like any other substance, you're going to have a lower tolerance for it. So, she, mixing alcohol and the shmeed probably just knocked her out. Yeah, so the question is, was it Danny? Was it Justin? Or was it some other person? And she says in here, he had brotherly concern for me. Your own testimony is saying the truth to you. And I legit think she's confused. I do too. But it gets more interesting. It gets even more interesting. So, then she goes on to say, to testify, yeah, after he asks this, who was the first person you talked to about what happened? The first person I told was Jane too. Jane Doe 2. Objection, overruled. When you spoke to Jane Doe 2, do you recall when that was? I believe it's 2013. You believe or you know? <laughs> because that is not a clear answer. When you have an answer, when a, when a lawyer asks you a question, you should say, yes, it was that day. Or, oh, well, maybe it was. You sound like Brittany Kimmy, so shut up. Now, remember. This attack allegedly happened in 1996, so that would have been, she didn't say anything for nine years to anyone? And then she told another accuser? Okay, I start to see a pattern. It smells so fishy. Well, if you were quiet for that amount of time, and then all of a sudden, Another accuser creeps into the room and they do a little thing like like other rats have done in these cases and they do a little thing and they walk in. Have you ever been raped by him? Yeah, I was raped by him in 2013. I'm sure of it. Are you positive? Yeah, I'm sure. See? Something to think about. Oh my God. It just doesn't sound... It, None it, of, it doesn't sound believable. No. <laughs> We're not there. It looks like collusion. Yeah. Hey, that's obstruction of justice. So you're telling me that 
the church going through and trying to coerce, which this is coercion, Tony Ortega got this wrong, because he was saying that the church going through and sending people in to try to get these women to stop accusing them, that's not really obstruction of justice. It is coercion, and so is this. It's collusion, too. Yep. <laughs> I, I think everyone was... involved should just drop it. It, this this woman practically admitted to the fact that this was something, and I would probably have banged the gavel and said, Kara Scott, case does must. Yeah. Goodbye. Let's, let's read a little bit more of what she said about this. And wait, and this incident happened in 1996? Yes. And you're able to determine this in relation to the rap party? Yes. And that was in August or September 1996? I would have to check exact dates. I would have to guess. But it was the conclusion of the movie. Yes. Had you known JD2 before this happened? Before the rap party? Yes! No! How did you get to know her? I did film with someone that was a friend of hers. This actress invited me over to her house and JD2 was there. That's bad. That's that's not look good. She got caught. And honestly, the jury is gonna think she's full of shit. Yeah. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty sure that they're going to also. It doesn't look good. And we need to talk to Justin. Now, if Philip Cohen is any good, he's got to get Justin. Justin's got to get up here. He needs to be interrogated. Yep. We need to hear what he has to say because he was in the room. Allegedly, mm -hmm. he would be another witness and we need to hear what he has to say. And yeah. maybe anyone else who's at the party because it sounds like there's a whole bunch of people there and her word is not good enough. No, it's not. Because... Anyone who was near Masterson could claim that he attacked them. Anyone. Anyone. Anyone can commit, say that they accuse anyone of anything. It's like the whole RHL argument. He's at 100 on the channel. I could run up and down the street and scream, Hey, everybody, the moon is made of green cheese. That doesn't make it true. Exactly. Oh, my God. I just said dads. That's our dad. I was just when we were kids. So then she goes on to explain that... She was upset with him because he was hot and cold and that there was a second incident. After all that, you saw it. What is up with these girls? And be like, uh, uh, I had another incident with my pen. And you sound like an idiot. Well, the rape happened just a few weeks before he started dating Jane Doe number three. And then she said that he like withdrew from her after he got a girlfriend. Yeah, I'm sorry he didn't choose you. I'm sorry. Shit happens. You get rejected. It doesn't mean that you're a terrible person. It doesn't mean that you're not hot. It doesn't mean that you're any less. It just means that that was not meant to be. It's all means. It, it does not mean. Don't take it personally. I know it's hard not to. I'm ace, so maybe I don't really understand. But you know what? I've been rejected from things before, too. Okay, so this is the second horrific incident that she's really upset over. I, I, I can't with this one. What happened? I was walking and he was driving and he pulled over and he was telling me I shouldn't walk and wanted to give me a ride. How did you respond? I said I was fine walking. Anything else stand out? He insisted on giving me a ride, so I ended up getting a ride from him. I guess whenever I would come in contact with him after that point, I find myself shaking and feeling kind of dot dot dot. After the incident, you were shaking? Objection leading. After the incident. So how did you feel when he drove up? That was me adding that in, by the way. Um, I mean, I feel like he does a way of making me feel very unnerved. And I kind of would shut down every time I would interact with him, including that time. You accepted the ride, though. Why? He was just very like, come on, get in the car. He just directed me to do it. And my nervous system sort of shuts down. And I don't know. I got the ride. Did he take you home? Yes. Anything about the drive that was unusual? No. Any conversation during the ride? No. After that, was there another time where you had run into him? Correct? Yes. At some guy's home, where he likes to. Wait, 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 wait. So, like, after all of that, you were in a car with someone who allegedly raped you, and nothing happened in the car. Huh? <laughs> what the fuck? This woman didn't to get your head, please, lady. Let's get your head on straight. And then she goes on to say later on that he was hot or cold when he was had a girlfriend and. One of the times that he was warm to her was when he went and picked her up in the car. So what was it? Was he warm or cold to you when he picked you up in the car? What is it? I'm sorry. <laughs> as much as I want to believe this woman, 
I can't. I can't. Like, honey, something happened to you at some point in your life. And honey, I get it. Like, I really do. My own story shows you that I get it. But I also know when someone is full of shit. Yeah. And when you are intoxicated in any way, you don't always make sense of what's going on around you. No. People wake up in random beds when they're new intoxicated. It happens. Yeah, I heard lots of stories because I used to work in a bar. Yeah. Sorry he rejected you. I'm very sorry. But it's time to move on. Don't blow up your whole life. Don't do that. Now, Tony Ortega, you got to take it from the women. Perhaps we have better bullshit meters when it comes to, like, other women than you do. Because I don't know why you're falling for this. I think you're blinded by your hatred for the Church of Scientology. And I understand that. But you got to separate the two. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've been covering Scientology for years. And I understand it's disgusting, it's gross, it's manipulative, and it's not a good church, and it's infiltrated governments, and it absolutely should be shut down. Yeah. But that does not mean that everyone associated with it has uh, sexually assaulted someone. Do I believe all of the witnesses? I don't know yet. I still don't know. I mean, I haven't heard Danny's side yet. No. And Jake. until I really hear Danny's side, I can't really make any any judgments. I mean, I don't know what Danny was thinking. I would be very curious to hear his side. Yeah, and Jane Doe number three, she's the one who's the most believable. I uh, y you see? That's why I'm not 100% sure something didn't happen, so I'm not 100% on this one. Yeah. See? You guys are trying to tell us that we're on his side, and we're not. I go witness by witness, by witness. I, I think that people are trying to use this case to take out the Church of Scientology. And, I, you know, Judge Almeida, or Amito, whatever her name is, has said that that's not what this trial is for. They're going to have a separate trial for that. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that, too, if you guys want us to go. To ensure that... We have due process in this country and that we all can maintain our right to that. We have to make sure that every single person, even people we don't like, get a fair trial. Yeah. And I don't, I, I hate to say this, but I don't think Tony Ortega is giving him a fair trial. He's sitting there online saying horrible things that he shouldn't be saying. Oh, and also... We made a short about that and somebody said, well, he's just acting like a juror. Any juror would in the courtroom. Yes, but you're on the, you're in the media dump dump. You would never be chosen as a juror. You know they go through a process for that. It's called Vaudeur. Vaudeur. Yes. I've been through Vaudeur before. Yeah. And I can tell you guys about that sometime if you ever want me to. Exactly. I can do a whole we can do a whole video on that if you really, 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 really want us to. Apparently it's confusing. It's not confusing. That they would never choose a journalist who had been covering the Church of Scientology for years and years and years to be on a jury no. in this trial. No. They ask you a bunch of questions. Like, let me talk. We'll say a little couple. Well, I'll answer a handful of questions I know I'm going to get. They ask you, first of all, they ask you your name. They ask you every job you've ever had, every friend you've ever had, every religious activity that you have ever been involved in. They ask you every extracurricular activity you've ever been involved in. Mm -hmm. From there, they narrow the pool. Jury people are selected by both the plaintiff and the defendant, or the prosecutor and defendant, depending on what, yep. what kind of, if it's a, you know, a case, a civil case, or a criminal case. And they get to decide, yes, you actually do have to face the two sides. You actually do have to do that. Yeah. Did you guys know that? It's really scary. And I, Rachel and I could do like a whole thing about this, if that's what you want. Because I think it's time we explain this, because I think a lot of you don't understand. Yeah. And I happen to have been through the process. So, yes, it was an interesting week. Um, thank you, Mr. Ortega, for attempting to cover it. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. You got to stay, you got to keep your emotions out of it. You got to. Yeah, I know. And I know it's hard, especially mm -hmm. since you've been covering Scientology for a really, really, really long time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Scientology, while I 
don't like any master's in Scientology is kind of disgusting too. So, yeah, you know. we're not saying we hate Tony Ortega. In fact, I'm really thankful for everything that he has done in exposing the church because all cults should be exposed. But you got to remember to keep yourself safe and to protect the law. Yeah, laws, too. laws matter. <sighs> so we are going to end the video with here as always thank you so much for watching to indicate that you like this video maybe you click on the thumbs up smash that subscribe button down below look at what has happened to our channel we are so excited but we have to keep the momentum going watch the video at the end watch it watch it watch it because you may learn something that you didn't know even if you've already seen it give that bell a big ring to indicate that you want to be notified about future up about future updates. For the record, generally we post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. We may go live on Sunday nights on this channel. That's for us to decide. We may also go live throughout the week, probably most likely on Instagram, maybe on Facebook. TikTok, I think we're gonna only have for business stuff now because it's just getting to be too hard for us. If you'd like to join us on a live, you're just going to have to ask. And if you don't say anything, we don't know who you are. Of course, we also have a podcast that goes out on Tuesdays entitled Gap of the Gals, which is a podcast on movies and TV that drops at 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But of course, Rachel and I couldn't stop at just one podcast, could we? Oh, no, 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 no. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Mr. and Ms. Crazy Wrestling Family featuring Rachel, myself, M C K S B J Arnie Rodriguez and Mr. Wrestling Chris if he's still interested and special guests and who knows we may also do one before a AEW pay-per-view too I don't know yet that will drop the Thursday before a WWE pay-per-view event yeah, all this is in the description box below. Check it out. We also have merch that we designed ourselves. Yeah, go get our ugly Christmas sweater. You know you want it. And if you just want to donate to the channel, that's super helpful. You can buy us a coffee or donate through PayPal. Please don't go broke doing it. We know times are hard. They're hard for everyone. It's hard for us too. We do not make much money doing this yet. So every little bit helps. Thank you to our donors. And remember, we got a family that we chose, and we love chatting with you guys. You know, our DMs are open anytime. If you got our phone number, text us. We'll message you whenever we can. Um, if you don't hear from us right away, we'll get to you. We'll get to you. Also, we don't, Rhea and I don't really check our personal pages. So if you message us on our personal pages, like Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that, we might not see it for several days. Just letting you know. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll talk to you again soon. Love and share. Bye. Bye.